Oh no, it's another episode of Tessera Devalues His Collectibles. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the end strike blazing bow. So you guys are probably wondering why I'm doing this. Uh, it's simple. I really wanted a blazing bow. And I found one on eBay that was new. So yeah, why not? It's a new blazing bow. How could I pass that up? With all that said, it's time for the best part where the collectors get really, really mad. All value is gone. All of it, every last bit of value has gone out the window. How do you open this? It smells like a really old office from like back in the 90s. And here we have the, wow, that's beautiful. Okay, uh, so this is the blazing bow. It looks really pretty in person, holy crap. It's shiny. It's like actually shiny. Gosh, it's all loose. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, so this goes, oh, it's spring loaded. Okay, so this goes on the bottom and it connects like, what? Does it connect like this? Oh, okay, it does. Okay, there we go, that makes sense. And then this one up here connects like that. Here we go, that's, okay, that's really comfortable. Um, but in that, good heavens, it's loud and it's hilarious. It's facing up, there we go. And then we have, come on, let it out. These big, goofy arrows, which are really goofy. So you guys have probably seen this blaster before. In my case, I have seen it countless times. I have seen this thing everywhere. This blaster has quite the history of being the blaster that all of my friends had and none of them ever played with. Seriously, when I was growing up, as soon as this thing came out back in 2013, basically everybody that I knew suddenly had one and none of them ever talked about it. I never saw any of my friends playing with it. I never saw, like, I would call them and, like, they would send me pictures and I could see the thing sitting on the floor in the background in the corner of their room. No one actually wanted to take responsibility for playing with this, has with, playing with this Hasbro, playing with this blaster. And that's really sad because this thing is actually one of the most interesting and underappreciated blasters I've ever seen. But first we gotta start with the design. Oh my gosh, this thing looks beautiful in person. I was not exaggerating when I said that when I saw the blaster in person, it looks good and it genuinely looks so pretty. I thought that these flames were just like painted on. They're actually extended parts of the plastic that stick out and are kind of punching out of the main shell. And it gives the blaster a lot more detail and a lot more volume than it originally had. Also, end strike is painted on both sides. Thank you, Hasbro. But genuinely, like, the detail in this blaster looks insanely cool. It looks so futuristic. Like, the grip has this hexagonal pattern on it with the same kind of plastic, like, molding style that the elites, the, the elite blasters did when they did the camouflage style of uh, molding to it. It also has these big stripes on the back of it. The whole, like, priming handle just has these big racing stripes on it. It's got flames all over it, not just here, but, like, up on here, the flames almost look like the top of this is melting down at the bottom of it. It is an insanely good looking blaster. This is seriously one of the best looking Nerf bows. No, screw it. This is the best looking Nerf bow I've ever seen. This thing looks like a compound bow and it looks like some sort of cybernetic, like a la alien laser launcher thing from the future at the same time. And good grief. It looks fantastic. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip and this huge priming grip thing at the back. But let's address the main grip first. Hasbro did not cut any corners with this main grip. It is like a strife grip. 
It actually feels like the Strife Grip, and I think it might actually be the same mold and styling as the Strife Grip, but with a different patterning on it. And it feels unbelievably fantastic in the hand. It genuinely feels like a good grip for a good blaster on a good bow. As for this thing in the back, I actually like to hold it wrong. <laughs> you see, for most people, you would want to put all four of your fingers through it, and this is this is really comfortable just by itself because it's smooth and filleted from all angles and it's got these nice chamfering details on it, which just, like, it really feels good. Gosh, this thing looks amazing in the sun. But what I like to do is I like to take these two fingers, my ring finger and middle finger, and put them through like a real bow and then pull it back. And doing that actually gives a similar feeling to shooting a real bow because if your ring and middle finger at the bottom, it is perfectly in line with your thumb and like the top of your hand. And it gives a much better sensation of shooting a bow like what I'm used to doing with my actual bow. This blaster, I can actually apply real archery principles to when I can't do that with any other bow that I can even think of out of Hasbro. That's insanity to me. I'm pretty sure the Thunderbow you can do the same thing with because it has like the big arms that move down. But this one is a very close second, if not even first place. So how does this blaster work? Well, it comes with three of these big goofy ass arrows, which are actually a very interesting ammo type that I completely forgot existed for a very long time, mainly because they're just so simple. It looks like a really, really long mega dart or a mega XL dart without the head and it's got these big fins on it. It's a really weird ammo type that doesn't seem like it should make sense out of nerf, but it makes sense out of nerf. You take one of these and you just push it over the end of the barrel like this. You pull this back and you release the fire. And it shoots considerably hard considering it's shooting such a goofy ammo type. But here's what's really cool. Let's say you were to take off this air restrictor right here. All of a sudden you can do this. Yup, Mega XL darts fit perfectly right on the front of the blaster with just the right amount of friction that I think that it would actually shoot these darts very, very hard. And that is a super cool mechanic. The fact that these just so happen to fit that's really promising for the future because it means that you might actually have a really nice Mega XL bow if you were to take the AR out of this thing and use it for Mega XL. The only other thing to know are these kind of arrow holders up here, which you can kind of press fit the arrows into, but they're really, really tight and it doesn't seem like a very good idea to leave the arrows in here because, well, it's insanely tight. You are going to permanently damage the arrows if you leave them in and getting them out is really hard. You either have to pull them out or you have to pry them out and leave these big gashes on them and it's not healthy for the arrows at all. So I would recommend just not using these in the first place. In fact, you might not even want to put them in because it's just easier to like carry some sort of dump pouch to put the arrows in or put the Mega XLs in or whatever you're shooting. Just don't use the ammo storage on the blaster. It's not gonna end well, I promise. So the end strike blaze and bow. Holy crap, is this thing better than I thought it was going to be. This is a blaster that really never got a chance. It came out and there were really no reviews on it. There were a couple reviews, but really not very many. All of my friends seemed to have them, but nobody ever wanted to play with them. Nobody ever really liked this blaster. And I'm pretty sure it's because of the big bad bow. The big bad bow is just another really big bow that shoots the same big goofy arrows except that one is better in pretty much every way except for the part where it really isn't a bow. It has a functional priming mechanism, catch, and trigger system. Yes, it looks like a bow, but it isn't pull back and release. You have a functional trigger that you have to take care of. This is a bow. It's got a pull back and release mechanism and it was done in an insanely good way. The plunger tube inside of this blaster is massive. It's the size of a long shot plunger tube. And that is terrifying because you can do some really, really good mods to this blaster without too much trouble at all. Imagine sealing off the plunger tube, taking out the air restrictor and setting this up to fire short length darts. 
you got the guts for an extremely good pull back and release bow blaster that you could probably snipe people from insanely far away with. The design, the build quality, the ergonomic setup, the way that it is designed and the way that it is set up like a traditional bow and that it really never cut any costs anywhere when it came to just being functional and being just a nice product. This thing is insanely good and I feel very bad that this blaster never had a chance when it came out originally. This is a blaster I highly recommend you guys take a look at. Whether it's new, whether it's used, whether it's stock, or whether you want to mod it, the Blazed Bow is awesome. If you want to find it, I highly recommend taking a look at eBay and they might have it on Blaster Barn, but I'm not quite sure. Thank you for watching. Bye.